Merely seeking refuge with someone is not worship. The proof that seeking refuge in itself is not an act of worship is the hadith narrated by Ahmed in his Musnad, which has a Hassan chain of narration, as said by Hafiz ibn Hajar, that Al-Harith ibn Hassan al-Bakri said in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أعوذ بالله ورسوله أن أكون كوافي دعاد I seek refuge with Allah and his messenger from being like the delegate of Aad. The Shaykh said that the evidence in the hadith is that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say to Al-Harith that he committed shirk by saying wa rasulihi and his messenger a'udhu billahi wa rasulihi when he sought refuge the companion did so because Allah is who creates the protection in reality and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a reason for someone to get the protection by the creating of Allah if one were to say, this was seeking refuge with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his life and in his presence, and this is acceptable, the unacceptable thing is seeking refuge with him after his death. We say, seeking refuge is one thing, or like we might say in English, Seeking refuge is seeking refuge. If someone permissibly sought it from the one who is alive and present, how would that be shirk when seeking it from the absent? This is irrational. Yani, how did it become worship of that one who's absent? Well, for the Wahhabi, he's saying because since he's not in your presence, he can't help you. So you must be worshipping him. That's how he sees it. So then, where's his problem? What is it that he could have in his creed that bridges this, that fills this gap for him? If he believed properly in miracles and karamas and awliya, the saints, then this would be easier for him to conceive. Because he doesn't believe in a karama, so he doesn't believe, for example, that someone could actually appear right in front of you and help you. Who's not a prophet, for example, if you were a wali. Uh, or he doesn't believe, for example, that Allah could make that one that you call him hear you and then he would make dua for you. The Wahhabi doesn't believe like that. We believe like that. So for him, then, we are worshipping those people. Didn't the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say in the Hadith Qudsi that Allah ta'ala said, وَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ Very literally, it would translate as, If I loved that slave, then I would become his hearing by which he hears. And one way of explaining this hadith is, once the slave becomes acceptable to Allah, and he becomes a saint, a wali, then Allah can give him, or Allah would give him, or might give him, a supernatural hearing. And also, Allah might give him supernatural strength. And also Allah might give him supernatural footsteps according to the rest of what's in the hadith. And all of that is true. All of that, there are reports about awliya who have done all those sorts of things. If the believer sought refuge from the living or the dead, he believes in both cases that the one whose protection is sought is a means to reach a goal if Allah willed for that. 
So he's not worshiping that one. This meaning does not change between the one who is alive and present and the one who is dead or absent. Not for Ahlul Sunnah. This meaning doesn't change for Ahlul Sunnah. Between being alive and dead and present and absent. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he met the Prophets on the night of Al Isra wal Mi'raj. Uh, Prophet Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, he brought people back from the dead and they spoke to the people. Many things like that. Umar ibn al Khattab, he was giving the speech when the Muslims were in Persia. He was in Medina, the Muslims were in Persia. And the Muslims were about to walk into an ambush. And he said, Ya Sariya, Al Jabal Al Jabal, O Sariya, the mountain, the mountain. And the Muslims there in another country heard his voice. And they and the story of that is known, and they, they escaped the ambush. And many, many, many things like that. Neither is the creator of the protection. Yani, whether one were alive or dead, whether he were present or absent, he's not the creator of the protection. Allah is the creator of the protection. After relating the hadith in its entirety in as sarih that Shaykh Abdullah's book, Sarih al-Bayan, the Shaykh said, So what do those who consider to wassul by the Prophet as shirk say about Ahmad ibn Hanbal narrating this hadith. Do they consider that he approves shirk or what? Because he narrated the hadith, he didn't comment on it. According to the Wahhabis, it's obvious shirk. It's one thing to narrate a weak hadith. It's another thing to put explicit, blatant, clear shirk in the hadith book. And then not say anything. Wa subhanallahi wa bihamdi.